there is really no way to have a scripted, perfect answer to every single interview question. You can look online, you can find all kinds of examples of PA school interview questions, and you can just drive yourself crazy by answering like a thousand of them. I'm Boris, I'm a second year physician assistant student. I just got done with didactic year, we got two weeks off, and I know a lot of you have interviews coming up for PA school. So the first thing I wanted to say is congratulations. It's a huge accomplishment just to get here. PA school is super competitive and just getting an interview is a really, really big deal. So first off, just wanted to say congratulations to everybody who's got an interview coming up and just wanted to say that I'm proud of you. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about interview prep, mainly how I prepared for the interview that actually got me a spot in the school that I'm going to right now. There's another school I interviewed at that did something called an MMI, a multiple mini interview. And if you want to hear more about that, just comment below, email me, and maybe I'll make a video about that. But this one is not about MMIs. So anyway, we got two weeks off from PA school after didactic year is all over and before we start kind of prepping for our clinical rotations. And I'm taking this online photography class and I needed a notebook. So I look through all my stuff and I find this. And as I'm flipping through it, I realize this is the notebook that I used for my interview prep for the school that I'm going to right now. And I knew I needed to share this with you guys because I think some of this stuff's really going to help you with your interview prep. And before I get started, I just wanted to say that I made a really informative video where I interviewed the Dean of Admissions from my PA school. And she talked all about all kinds of things about the application, especially interviews. And I actually clipped out the parts that were just about the interview and made it a separate video, which I'm going to link right here, which you should definitely watch after you finish watching this video. All right, so let's get started. So the very first thing I wanted to point out about my interview prep that's in this notebook is I use this notebook as kind of a calendar, as you can see right here. Maybe you can't see, I don't know, uh, but January 8th, 2019. So this was just like my plan of the day for that day, January 8th, 2019. I said, bring a laptop to work, go running. I had a meeting and do two hours of interview prep. So I really wanted to emphasize that. If you really want to be successful in your interview, you have to take it really seriously. Okay, it's not just something that you can do the night before, you know, 20 minutes or 10 minutes, 20 minutes a night, just watching YouTube videos like this, even though it's helpful, it's not enough. You really have to put in some work and some time to give yourself the best shot. And this is for every single interview you do. And I know some of you might be going on like five, six, 10 of them. So you're signing up for a lot of hours, but I promise you it's gonna pay off. The way I think about it is PA school is super competitive and just getting an interview is competitive. But once you're there, it's still competitive. Not everyone who gets an interview gets a spot in the class. That's just impossible. So you're interviewing for something that's really in demand. And the way I like to think about it is PAs make about $100,000 a year, right? Give or take. Maybe we'll make more in the future. Who knows? Let's just say we make 100 grand a year. And let's say you graduate when you're like 24, 25, maybe 34, 35. I don't know how old you are. But anyway, let's say you work for like 40 years. You have a 40-year career. Well, that's $4 million. If you're competing for a job that's going to pay you four million dollars over the course of your life and a lot of other people want that job do you think it's worth more than like 30 minutes of prep i think you'd probably take it really seriously and you'd prepare quite a bit for that job interview and that's exactly what your pa school interview is so i don't know if putting it in that perspective is going to help you but that's just how i thought about it basically just telling myself this is a big deal you should take it seriously and then of course you should also tell yourself yes it's a big deal but i need to relax I know, you're walking kind of a fine line there between like anxiety and laziness and too much anxiety and too much laziness and only you can really figure out where you're most effective on that line, but I'm just saying it's important to take it seriously. The next thing I have here is just some basics that I wanted to remind myself because I took this notebook with me when I interviewed and I just jotted down a couple of things I wanted to tell myself over and over again just so I didn't forget because they're super important when you're trying to make a good first impression. So I don't know if you see this, but it says, shake the interviewer's hands and remember their names and thank them for their time afterwards and also pause think then answer so you might be watching this video in 2020 the age of covid where most of your interviews are going to be virtual they're going to be online but one day we might have interviews that are not virtual and not online again so this thing with shaking people's hands and looking them in the eye and all that stuff that's going to be important again if you have a virtual interview, I guess disregard this one tip. But for in-person interviews, taking the time to shake your interviewer's hand, remember their name, and then once you're done with the interview, make sure you thank them for their time because they did take a lot of time out of their day to interview you. And it just makes a really good first impression anyway. Now this other thing here, pause, think, then answer. 
I know for me, and if you watch my videos, you can tell I talk really fast, I think really fast, and sometimes I overthink. And when it's not a YouTube video that I'm able to edit out all the awkward stuff, I actually kind of freeze up and I don't know what to say and my mind's just going too fast to be productive. And so just remembering this, even reading it a few times during the interview day really helped me. Just to remind myself to pause when you hear a question. To pause, take it in, give yourself a few seconds to think about it, and then go. And you'll just sound more organized, more coherent. And I actually remember in part of my interview where it was just me and two other people, I remember actually asking the interviewer, hey, I just need a few seconds to think about this. I have a good story I'm trying to remember. And the interviewers were totally cool about it. They totally understood. They're just like, yeah, take your time, do what you need to do before you answer. We're completely fine with that. Don't take like two minutes while everyone's just sitting there, you know, twiddling their thumbs and you're making it awkward by taking too long. But just know that it's okay to take a few seconds to think of a good response. The next thing I have here is questions to ask your interviewers. So I know I talk a lot about this really common interview question that's, do you have any questions for us? Which is usually at the end of your interview. And this is really good for that, but it's also really good to ask a follow-on question. So let's say your interviewer asks you about, I don't know, an experience you had or a grade you got or something else from your application and you answer that. Well, you could just sit there kind of awkwardly and wait for them to ask you another question, or you could ask a related follow-on question which will make it seem less like an interview and more like a conversation and make it just more comfortable and pleasant for everybody and leave a good impression of you in the interviewer's mind and give you a better chance of having a positive evaluation and then ultimately acceptance to that PA school. So it's really good to just have a short list of questions you can ask your interviewers. A couple that I wrote down are, does your school have any international rotations? Not that I'm necessarily interested in doing that, but either way, it's just a good thing to talk about and maybe get a conversation going about rotations in general, which I know you're really interested in anyway. So it's just a good question to ask, I think. And then the other question I have here is, what do students say they wish they had done to prepare for the rigorous curriculum of didactic year? So I know it's kind of a mouthful, but what this question does, basically what I'm asking is, what are some things that help students be successful in didactic year? And remember, I'm asking this as an interviewee. I wasn't even in the school yet. And what this basically communicates is that I know I'm interviewing, but I already see myself where I wanna be. I already see myself as a PA student. I'm already thinking next level. I'm already thinking, what am I gonna do once this interview goes well, once I get offered a spot, and once I become a student? What am I gonna do to set myself up for success? And hey, by the way, you're a professor. Hey, what do you think? Can you tell me some things that are helpful? I think it's a really good question because it just makes you seem confident and organized and just says good things about you. So obviously you can use this question word for word. It might be a little awkward if a bunch of people did. So maybe kind of put it in your own words or think of different questions. But either way, I think it's good to ask like a specific question about didactic year, about clinical year, whatever. Just ask specific questions about the school. The next thing I have here is stories, just a handful of stories from my own life and my own clinical experience. No, they're not like multiple paragraphs and everything, but it's just like names and places that I've worked and things like that, that just kind of bring things up in my head. Oh yeah, I wanna talk about that. So for instance, I have Mr. T, Jim, Mr. M. These are patients that I took care of as a CNA, and I definitely have lots and lots of good stories about every one of them, but I just wanted to jot them down to make sure I don't forget. And then as I've told you in other videos, if you're interviewing for PA school, it's really important that you know your application from start to finish. You can talk about every single thing in your application because the people interviewing you, they actually have your application right in front of them. So they can just be flipping through it and ask you, oh yeah, by the way, you said this, this, and that in your essay. Tell me more about that. Or how did that go? Or something like that. And the worst thing you can do is be like, I said that? Yeah, you don't want to do that. You want to be able to talk about it passionately, enthusiastically, know your application. So the next few things I wrote down here are actually from my essay. For instance, Koshka Gulayet Sama Sibir is this Russian quote from this Russian song that I started my essay with. And honestly, it was probably the most interesting part of my essay. So if an interviewer brought that up, it would be really awkward if I didn't just know the quote right on the top of my head and was able to talk about it and what that song means to me. So I definitely wrote that down. Another thing I have jotted down here for my essay is this quote from Martin Luther King that I, I don't think I ended the essay with, but it was somewhere towards the end. It's only through the bringing together of head and heart, intelligence and goodness, shall man rise to the fulfillment of his true nature. And if somebody asked me in the interview, hey, that was a really great quote. I love that quote. What does that mean to you? I really wanted to be ready to talk about it. 
And so I jotted that down just so as I'm going through the interview day, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about it. And then a few other things here are just basic PA stuff. This isn't really for the place I interviewed specifically, but it's like the history of the PA profession. Like when was the PA profession created? 1945, Dr. Eugene Stead at Duke University. When did the first PA school class graduate? 1947, Duke University. What are the differences between PA and NP? PAs are educated on the medical model, NPs on the nursing model, and then it's good to know the differences between those two models, which I have right here as well. So just some very basic PA school interview kind of trivia questions that everybody should know. And then last but not least, another really common interview question, not just for PA school, but in general for jobs and all kinds of stuff, is something like, tell me about your weakness, or tell me how you messed up something one time and you fixed it, or tell me about the worst day of your life, or something like that. Basically what they're asking is, can you be self-critical? Can you see things that you do wrong and accept that they're wrong and take responsibility and fix them instead of having a big ego and blaming other people or blaming the circumstances or blaming whatever? It's just a really important quality for a healthcare provider to be constantly ready to improve and not have an ego about it. So I knew I was probably gonna get a question something like that. So I jotted down a quick story of the biggest thing I ever messed up in my entire life. This didn't make it into my essay, or at least I don't think it did. But I knew I was going to get a question like this, so I was ready to talk about it. So mine, for instance, is uh, messing up this joint service ceremony at the Pentagon when I was still in the Navy and, uh, and almost getting kicked out of the ceremony planning office for that. We called it details. And basically how I had to learn attention to detail really quickly. And before that, I was kind of more lackadaisical about my work. But from then on, I became really meticulous because it really mattered. So anyway, everybody's got a story like that. Everybody's messed something up. If you haven't, you need to go find your halo and go back up in heaven with all the other angels because I guarantee you, if you're human, you messed something up. You probably messed up something big. So be ready to talk about it and be ready to talk about what you learned from it and how you're a better person and eventually a better clinician because of that one mistake in your life. And so a couple of things in here that are more school specific and you should look into for every school that you interview at. It's the mission and vision statement of each of your PA schools. You want to write those down and just be ready to say a few words about what they mean to you and how you embody those values and then also why you're choosing the school because of those values. It might be the case that this is the only interview you got, so naturally you're going on the only interview you got, but still you have to act as if you're choosing the school willingly, you have a million other offers, and you really want to go to this school particularly because of the values that they say they hold in their mission and vision statements. So get those from the school's websites, write them down, and then write down a few words about what those mean to you and how you relate to those values. So that's exactly what I did here. So for instance, the mission statement for my school is to educate competent, caring, compassionate, and ethical clinicians who have a lifetime commitment to excellent patient care and continual self-assessment and advancement in their medical skills and knowledge. So I think that's a really good mission statement and I really resonated with it and what I kind of jotted down here is that medicine and science are always ever-changing. And this is what I love about medicine is because it forces you to grow and become better every single day because people count on it. So you have to become a better person every single day. And I just think that's an amazing thing about working in medicine in general. So I really love that that is what the school's mission statement is. And I communicated that in my interview. And then I did the same thing with their vision statement. And just one more very school-specific thing. I know not everybody is going to be able to do this. Like the vision and the mission statement, you can get it right off the school's website. You don't have to know anyone or have any connections. You can just find that. Anybody can find that. But for this, you kind of have to know people who already go to the school. And this is something I did because I did know people who go to the school that I was interviewing at. And I asked them, first off, how's the interview day organized? What should I expect? Do they give us breakfast? Should I come with food? How long should I expect to be there? Am I going to write something? Is it an individual interview? Is it a group interview? Like, what should I expect? And just knowing how the day is going to go really reduces your stress and your anxiety level and just helps you be your best self in the interview. Now, before your interview, the school is usually going to send you a schedule and they're going to tell you exactly what to expect. You know, your individual interview is at 8.30 a.m. Your group interview is at 11.30. Your writing interview is at 1 p.m. Your MMI is at 3. Whatever the school does, they're going to tell you exactly what to expect. So just one last thing I really wanted to say about prepping for your interview there's really no way to have a scripted, perfect answer to every single interview question. You can look online, you can find all kinds of examples of PA school interview questions, and you can just drive yourself crazy by answering like a thousand of them and just being ready for every one. But I'm telling you, that is the wrong way to go. You're going to drive yourself nuts, you're going to stress yourself out, and I also guarantee you, 
Some of those questions will not be on your interview and your interviewers are just gonna make some stuff up as they go and there's just no way to have a perfect scripted answer for every single question. Please don't try to do that. The much better thing to do is just to know your basics, like the history of the PA profession, the mission and vision statements of the school you're applying to and be ready to talk about all those things. You know, PA versus NP, why do you wanna be a PA is the biggest question you'll be asked, things like that. So definitely have good answers ready for those basic questions. But for everything else, I really think it's much better to just, to just have a handful of stories that are really good and really descriptive of your experience and you as a person and just be ready to apply those to any question. And also just have a few tricks up your sleeve, like being able to ask a follow-on question and keep a conversation going instead of just letting your interviewers fire off question after question after question. It's much better to try to make it more pleasant and more conversational and ask the interviewers some questions as well. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching. I really hope this helped some of you folks that are getting ready for your interviews right now. Don't be nervous. If they offered you an interview spot, that means you do have a chance at getting into that PA school. You did it. Congratulations. You're awesome just for getting this far. Most people don't. If you haven't gotten an interview or you haven't gotten one yet, hang in there. Your day will come. Okay? I'm really proud of all of you, and I just wanted to say thank you for watching my content. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you know anyone who's applying to PA school or who has an interview coming up, share this video, share my channel with them, and I'll see you in the next one.